In many cases, users ask me how to simulate uh, a given uh, circuit with a parasitic necklist extracted from the layouts. So usually when you design a new component, a new block, like an, an amplifier, for example, you draw the circuit, you create a symbol with, with the input and output uh, pins for this block, create a symbol, place the symbol in a test bench, run the netlist. Let's show the netlist after the netlist command. So you run the netlist, you get the x1 instance here, which calls this sub-circuit, which is directly obtained from the from the sch schematic implementation here. So if I run the simulation and load the waveforms, here I get my output. This is the input of the operational amplifier and this is the output. In some cases, you need to simulate a block with a, use a different implementation for the block. In this case, for example, I want to add a different schematic. So you see this symbol, comp3.sim, and this, and this symbol, comp3.sim, are exactly the same. But in this second case, I specify a different schematic. And there is indeed a schematic, a different schematic for this. If I descend, you see comp3.parax while the first has come free. Okay. In this case, I have just put a simple schematic where it, I just add some parasitic, capa some loading capacitances on the input and keep the output at zero volt. Just to show, this is you do this in, in some cases to simplify a full chip simulation where unused blocks are uh, made empty just keeping the output to a known level and adding maybe some capacitances on the input to guarantee the same loading effect on the outer network. Okay, so in this case I have only specified a different schematic, created a new schematic for this block, comp 3 parax run the netlist, you see X2 is now using COM3 Parax while X1 is using COM3. And there is a netlist for this COM3 Parax here with the empty the empty block, keeping the output low and the small capacitances on the input. Okay, simulate, load. You see the second output, in this case the yellow output is always low because this is what the schematic is supposed to do. If we go further, you can add another block, which is using, as before, the same symbol. But in this case, I am also specifying a different name for the schematic, comfrey pex and I am adding a spice sim def. It, this is uh, an attribute meaning for the meaning is spice symbol definition. I am providing the, the netlist for this block as a text here instead of using a schematic. There is no schematic. If I try to descend, Xkim tells me there is no schematic. Okay. So in this case, I don't even need to specify dot sch for this. I can do that, but there is no reason to do that. It's only a different name to make this different from the other two implementations. This spice sim dev specifies a sub circuit. This name must match this other name and the pins, the list of the pins must match the list of the pins in the symbol plus minus minus out. Okay. The order does not ma matter because Xkeem will get this order in the net list. Okay. If I get the netlist, you see the X3 instance is using out, min, uh, plus out and minus as the order. Okay? And this order is 
defined here, plus, out, and minus. So the netlist will be always consistent. Xkim looks into this text and gets this uh, list of pins and adjust the netlist, the instance, to match, to always match the the port order. Okay, we run the simulation and reload the waveforms, and you see, in this case, the the white output is very similar to the s s schematic implementation of the circuit, this one, because the netlist is uh, supposed to be a netlist extracted from the layout where there are some parasitic capacitances. Parasitic capacitances will make the circuit a bit slower. So it still works, but it is a bit slower. We can go further with the last example where we add another yet another symbol it's say is always the same symbol i use yet another name to make it different from the other three in this case the spice symbol definition is not a, a, an actual text describing the circuit but it is an include file uh, instead usually i i could just write uh, spice sim dev equal to the of of this file so i if i can write the actual uh, absolute part of of the the file this is equally works perfectly as the above one but the above attribute uses this function to avoid search uh, giving the full path xkim will search for this file in the search path because xkim has a the xkim library path which has these components xkim will look in all these directories to find one file named com 3 pex 2sir i have added also a tcl command which shows the, the content of this file. If I select this and trigger the TCL command, for example, by using Control H, you see, this is the file. It's the same as the before, where the file is now given by a dot .include line, and this has even bigger parasitic capacitances. So this is supposed to be even slower than the other one because it's another parasitic with uh, bigger capacitances. So we run the simulation and reload the files again. And you see the last output is following the previous, but it's slower. So. We are using uh, the same symbol with four different implementations. This is the initial schematic implementation. This is a parasitic where you use this sometimes. If you have multiple blocks, you use this one to make this empty and making your simulation faster. This is a, uh, one with a description from from an um, extracted parasitic netlist which is copy and pasted directly into the attribute, into the spice symbol definition attribute, okay? You add this attribute, and if this attribute is present, together with a different name for the instance name, for the symbol name, the you don't need a schematic. This block has no schematic, and this block also has, has no schematic. If you try to descend, you can't. And... Uh, in this one, the sub-circuit is copy-pasted, and in this case, the circuit is included, and we are using this absolute symbol path, which is an scheme function for searching this file into the search path. So you don't need to, to provide the absolute full path. Since we are using this TCL function, you have a TCL eval wrapper so xkim will call tcl to resolve this absolute part of the file okay 
Uh, also, very important to note, this external file has this port order. And even if I change the port order, for example, I set minus here and delete this one, save. So I've changed the file. If I do an at list and simulate and I reload the file, you see it's still working as, a, as before. Even if I change the, the port order here, Xkim will arrange the netlist to to make the correct port order. For example, you see X4 has plus minus out, while the X3 has plus out minus. So the order is different, but also the subsequent this order for X4 matches the external file. Xkim will look into the file and ensure the port order is consistent because this is one of the major problems when doing a simulation with external netlist provided for example by layout tools extracting the layout netlist with full parasitic peck annotation okay thank you